Hey besties, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiana May, aka your internet best friend. In case you didn't know this already, you have a best friend on the internet and it's me. <laughs> nice to meet you. Make sure to subscribe so next time when I say hey besties, I'm talking to you. Today, I'm gonna be sharing something with you guys and I'm gonna be very open and vulnerable and honest and you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, Tiana, what's this thing you're gonna share with us? Is it some harrowing childhood story is it some traumatizing thing you ate and it's a story time about how you got food poisoning no i mean this is assuming you didn't read the the, the, the title of the video <laughs> but today i'm gonna be talking about my art i'm gonna be sharing some of my sketches my procreate library and also some photography and i'm gonna be telling you the meanings behind some of my pieces and just showing like my creative growth over the years and throughout ups and downs in life and mental health and how it kind of came out in my art. So let's get right into it. I'm really excited. Firstly, let's talk about my sketchbook. Here is my sketchbook. I've had this sketchbook since the 23rd of May, 2020. But well, going into my sketchbook, we're met with the very first page, which is basically just a bunch of scribbles. Whenever you get like a blank piece of paper or a blank book, it's always a lot of pressure to put your pen on paper on the very first blank page. This one guy recommended that when you first get a sketchbook, the very first page should be the page where you just scribble on because then you don't have any anxiety for anything else in the rest of the sketchbook to be perfect. I thought that was a good philosophy. So I just did a bunch of scribbles and just did anything. Skipping ahead, I don't know who this girl is. This girl literally is just someone who I randomly draw. You'll see in the rest of the sketchbook that I kind of just randomly draw this one girl that I keep seeing in my head. On the following page, you see a picture of a guy and he was an interesting drawing. At the time when I drew him, it was when there was a lot of racial tension in the world, especially in America and there was a lot of things going on, especially with Black Lives Matter and with George Floyd and a bunch of other racial injustices and I was feeling very like a attacked as a black person because even though you're not related to these people you feel for their families and it honestly I hate saying it but like it really could have been my cousin or could have been someone else so I drew this picture of this boy because I felt like at that time being black in the world you you weren't really allowed to talk about the elephant in the room which is racism and i felt that often as black people we're forced into silence because we can't exactly say that oh this institution is racist or we can't say this politician is racist or this thing is oppressive or anything about anything we can't really say anything and i thought that by drawing how i saw things it would like help me process my emotions at the time on the following page less serious is a bunch of like random cartoony stuff and i just thought that they were cute and i was learning how to draw chibi style and i really enjoyed the chibi style but it's very difficult next we have a bunch of things about proportions so the head tilting upwards looking left and right i was really trying to learn how to draw people I don't know why I was so obsessed with drawing people, but I thought it would be interesting to learn how to draw people. And then we have a bunch of noses. <laughs> and then also I did, I did the same with eyes. Here we have an interesting picture. It's that girl we keep talking about that I keep seeing in my head, but here she looks a bit more haggard. Her hair is a bit like all over the place. And she kind of looks like she's seen some things or maybe she's been through something. Her hair is like all mashed up. So maybe she was like running through a forest or something. This is me just trying to give her a narrative. Here we have a very interesting page. Now, I should say this before anyone comes for me in the comments being like, oh my gosh, why are you talking about all this rubbish stuff? It's all rubbish, your art's rubbish. The thing is, yeah, my art is my art and it's what I create and what I like and what I do. And when I think back to when I was in Korea and I was learning about the early Koreans and their drawings and about cavemen and their drawings, they were literally crushing up berries, getting a piece of wood, getting a piece of stone and hitting it against the wall to try and like document and show things. How is that any different to what I do? You know, I'm just a person who's in this universe, same as them, 
who is just drawing and scribbling things to try and portray something or release some kind of emotional feeling or anything and I, I, I really love art for that because there's some people who are kind of like art snobs and they like oh well that's not nice the, the, the composition and the and the color scheme is I don't really care <laughs> I don't really care about people's opinions really of my art to say that it's bad if you have an opinion of it in regards to like the meaning that's great but I feel like with this page it may look like a bunch of rubbish to some people but to me it kind of shows the willingness to kind of talk about something it's like me expressing chaos like the chaoticness of my, my brain is essentially just a a big blob of self-expression as someone who is such a perfectionist seeing chaos in my work is actually quite interesting it's like the the yin and yang <laughs> of my personality that i'm a perfectionist in regards to most things but when it comes to like my art and stuff there can be elements of chaos and darkness on this next page you see a flower and I really like this flower because it's not quite as beautiful as most people expect like flowers to be drawn. It's such like a, a scratchy and almost aggressive drawing and yet it represents something that is soft and s smells nice and is beautiful and how it grows and it points to the sun. I really like it. It's, if someone wants to get a tattoo, there's a cool tattoo I feel. <laughs> but it might be a bit complicated for the tattoo artist now that I think about it. And on the next page, I don't know why I wrote poetry in this book, because obviously I don't know if, if you know this about me, but I write poetry. I'm currently writing an anthology for myself. I started writing it in 2019 and I'm still like adding to it, but I guess I should technically type these up or maybe like scan them. And here I have a poem, which is very short, but it says, do you see me for the star I am? Or am I just gas and dust to you? And I really like this because it makes you really think about how you view people because how I view one person can very much differ to how someone else views them because stars are made from cosmic dust and gas and random things and they all form together and atoms and all these things. And from a scientist's point of view, from like an astrologist, is that the right person? <laughs> A person who studies the stars, from their perspective, they may see it as a bunch of scientific things and think that it's all interesting scientifically. Whereas general population like me will probably see a star and be like, oh my gosh, so pretty, wow. And I thought that that was just like an interesting thing. And I think maybe I was having some internal conversation about like how people view me. Like, do you see me for the star I am? Or am I just gas and dust to you? Am I just things that are just seemingly me meaningless to to most people is is that how you would see me i'm gonna skip ahead to an interesting page here's a really cool picture of a girl i drew this when i was in korea at this point i was in my quarantine in korea and i was in my room just bored out of my mind and i was like you know what i'm gonna draw something so i did and i drew her and her shirt says the system is rigged she has purple hair she's giving very much gen z activist <laughs> And I don't know, I really like her. I, I like her eyes. I think I'm really proud of her eyes and her eyebrows. On the following page, we have a similar face to the one I just showed you, but with her, she looks a bit more pouty. And maybe she's actually a continuation of the girl from before with the haggard hair. She looks a bit more happier. Maybe, I can't tell if she's smiling. She might be smiling as giving Mona Lisa. And on the following page, we see a kind of version of the previous person, but also this person is very much inspired by SZA. She kind of looks like SZA in, in the way that her hair is long and she's wearing a crop top and baggy trousers. It's very SZA-ish of her. I drew a three in her chest, like a, like a tattoo of a three in her chest because three is my favorite number and I just thought it looked cool. But I'm, I'm, I really like this. I, I wish I gave her a name. I don't have a name for her. Maybe you guys can name her in the comments. And here we get to one of the most interesting pieces of work that I've done which is my weeping angel image. And the great thing about this piece is that it's actually a self-portrait. This is actually me that I drew. The picture is very chaotic, very like 
loud and scary and also quite like aggressive i don't know if i said aggressive but it's very aggressive and i really like that i drew not really much of a face i kind of did a bit of like abstract drawing where i gave myself like the facial structure but no facial features except for like crying eyes and i want to interpret this as the eyes crying blood and i thought that like me being portrayed as an angel but that i'm crying is a very interesting imagery i think the reason why i'm interpreting it as someone crying blood is because in the bible when jesus was praying they said that he was praying so hard that he it looked like he was sweating blood or he actually was sweating blood and i think I drew inspiration from that, but instead of sweating, it was crying tears of blood. And then we just have a bunch of me testing out paint brushes and testing out my watercolors. And then we have my first ever watercolor painting. This painting was inspired by Bob Ross, but I didn't really do a good job. And it was my first try with all the pens and a new technique. I'd never really painted with watercolors before. So it was an interesting learning experience. And on the other page, you have a bunch of flowers. The reason why there's a bunch of flowers there is because I was testing out how to paint flowers because in my early Christmas video, I don't know if I really showed it much, but for Christmas, I gifted all of my friends paintings of their birth flowers. I'm still to give Rufia her one though. I need to remember. Rufia, if you're watching this, remind me. And on the next page, being the final page of my sketchbook that I'm gonna be showing today, we have a painting of a rose. And this was my very first flower painting. I was well chuffed because I thought that was gonna look real stinky. <laughs> Cause you know how you have all the petals and stuff? Yeah. But I'm really proud of it, I think it's really nice. And thus ends the tour of my sketchbook. Next up, we're gonna quickly go through some of my Polaroids that I've taken. I recently got a new Polaroid camera. I don't know where it is, I will show it to you, but it takes square images. I took some that I really like and I would like to describe the meaning to them. If you were in my live stream the other day, which you should be, I live stream on Fridays on YouTube and on Saturdays, on Twitch, all the information is down below. If you were in my live stream, you would have seen a lot of these photos, but the ones I'm gonna be talking about today are ones that I've taken in Leicester. First, we're gonna talk about this image of some Watsits, and the story behind this is mainly inspired by Andy Warhol, because I was watching his documentary on Netflix, thank you to friend who shall not be named, and I was like, oh my gosh, I really understand why he did like the soup cans, did all the Coca-Cola stuff, the Paramount stuff, like I understood it, it was, it was like a, almost like criticizing and also being observant of society and American consumption. And I had just eaten some Watsit and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take a picture of this. So I remember the documentary. It kind of does also represent like indulgence and consumption with it being food. You know? Next we have a picture of the sun and when I was taking this picture, I was just looking outside and it was a really nice sunrise. Was it a sunset? I think it was a sunrise. It was a sunrise. It was early in the morning. It had been a while since I'd seen a sunrise because I'd been in kind of like a, I wouldn't say a, a depression, more like a depressive episode where I was sleeping until like 10, waking up for class, doing my class, going back to sleep, waking up at two, and then missing the sunrise. And this was the first time in a while that I had seen the sun literally rise and I thought I should take a picture of it. And I tilted the camera and made it so that the land would be kind of slanted. So it looked like I'm kind of like flying through the sky. And also the way how my windows are dirty from the outside, I can't scale the building to clean them, of course, but the way how they're dirty on the outside from like wind and dust, it kind of made the sun look like a bunch of galaxies or like, like a, a universe. And that's another part of that piece of like looking at the sun and stuff. I took a picture of my eye looking at the sun and in my eye, you can kind of see how the sun is also slanted and like the light of it is like piercing through my eye. And it made me really think about portals and like transitional places and areas in which you go from one place to another. Essentially like how the sun exists in our reality, in our like time, and in our like space. 
but then we can't go to it the only way to go to the sun would be to cross the portal which is the sky and i just thought that like eyes are known as the windows to the soul and like windows are also a type of portal so i thought it was also really cool to take a picture of my eye looking at the sun which is on the other side of a portal through a portal which is the window through another portal which is literally my eye i just thought it was really cool and kind of like moody as well alongside that the next day there was a really nice just sky in general and the clouds were looking extra fluffy and i was really appreciating how like fluffy the clouds looked and it made me think back to that whole thing about like the sky being a portal and portals of clouds and you know just 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 portal things you know just portal things and i just took a picture of the, the sky of the, the two fluffy clouds that i saw and i just thought it was cool and that's like the the polaroids i wanted to share with you guys before we move on to the next part of this video i want to show you something that i did on stream also which was this and this was a watercolor painting that i did on stream and it's like like physically like a canvas kind of thing and i thought i would share it to you guys as a part of the like the body of work <laughs> on top of sketching and doing watercolors i also do digital art and this is something i've been really passionate about for quite a few years now i've done a couple pieces that i've already like posted on my art instagram but here and now i'm going to be premiering some of the things that i've drawn lately i've done a couple things and i've been a bit like inspired it's very interesting because i was in a bit of a rut creatively in regards to youtube but whilst in this creative rut i was kind of catapulted into this creative outpouring in regards to digital art and in regards to photography as well and it's been very interesting like just being open and allowing myself to actually fulfill these desires to create art with that being said let's get into some art so first we have this picture of a light and i wanted to call it luna originally but i wasn't sure if i wanted to give it a name or just like a allow it to have its own name its own feelings maybe it's called untitled right now but i really like this because whilst it is literally just a thing that kind of looks like a light in the midst of darkness it also kind of radiates like peace and obviously with it being a light in the midst of darkness it shows that maybe that there is you know the whole thing of like a light at the end of the tunnel it, it gives that vibe of there being something there's a glimmer of hope there's the tiniest speck of light in the midst of darkness so even your darkest moments that is never truly as dark as it is because there's always a glimmer of of light there's always something there to like hang on to or to seek peace from and i don't know i just really like it it's my background currently on my ipad and every time i see it it brings me joy next i have this unfinished piece which is a bridge in korea i'm currently doing i think it's an acrylic painting or maybe an oil painting digitally and i really like it because it's a painting of a memory of a day that i had a really great time it was the day that i went to the aquarium in seoul well, an aquarium not the aquarium <laughs> and i had a great time and it was also the day that i coincidentally posted the same picture as, as rm because <laughs> it was raining in korea and i took a picture and posted it and it was in black and white and like a minute later rm also posted the same picture and i was like oh my gosh not, not us being twins got twin now you know and it was just like a funny day just seeing like my friends be like oh my gosh don't you posting the same picture as rm like literally at the same exact time and it was just funny i don't know <laughs> next up we have a very beautiful painting that i titled serendipity because i was listening to bts's jimin's serendipity when i was painting it and i just felt that it kind of encapsulated how that song felt to me and 
I really like the paint splashes. I love the different textures of paintbrush. I love the water effect. I do like sometimes where I either listen to a song or I am feeling something and I just express how I feel or how the song's making me feel onto the canvas and I just let it be and that's just how it was or how I saw it in my head. And this is how I saw Serendipity. Next up, as many of you guys know, I have a love <laughs> for cheesecake. And this is my very first cheesecake, a painting of it. And I recently finished it. I think this, there can still be stuff added to it. I wouldn't classify it as unfinished, but more as something that's a work in progress. I literally have been working on this painting for months now just scribbling every time I'm in the lecture, just trying to like add to the sketch behind it, but also add to the painting on top of it. And it's just been great. It's been really peaceful actually, <laughs> like working on this and using it to help better my mental health. Next, we have a, a drawing painting that I like to call Masquerade. And at the time when I was doing this, I was feeling very upset with myself because it felt like I, was very upset and depressed internally and sad internally but i would do my face up you know smile for the camera and be happy and i felt that this encapsulated that feeling of you know when you have to kind of put on the mask in order for people to accept you or be happy around you or not interrogate you about your current feelings and stuff and i just felt that I had to put a mask on in order to kind of survive day to day and I was going through a lot of stress in regards to uni and in regards to just overall life and the pandemic and everything and it just felt that I had to pretend to be okay. A lot of people feel this way where they're like the strong friend or the strong family member and a lot of people don't check on them and make sure that they're okay or if they do it's kind of like, like we really have the mask built onto us where we're kind of pretending that everything is okay. And that's like how I felt. Like it felt like I was putting on a mask, putting on an identity of this person's okay. Don't look here, she's not crying. Definitely she's not crying. And yeah, that's, ma that's, that's the painting, Masquerade. Masquerade, Masquerade, how do you say it? <laughs> the next painting is a self portrait and it's a painting that i recently posted where it's actually a picture of me inside of a bathroom on my birthday taking a picture and i just thought that i should remix the photo and make it my own the painting is also kind of a commentary on the artificialness of how we capture data how we capture images and art and things like that where it is very artificial because if you really think about what this image is, it is a static image of me holding a phone, pointing a phone's camera at a mirror to then take a picture of what's in the mirror, which is me holding the phone with the camera pointing at it, but basically myself. And this is very much like a, a commentary on that. And that's reflected in how I've like squiggled out my face, how I've altered the image a lot. I flipped upside down, I've crossed my, myself out, I've ruined my face, I've distorted, I've painted over. And I wanted to point out how artificial photos really are and how they can be easily manipulated. And I don't know, I, I really like it. I, I, it's kind of inspired by Basquiat as well because when I was watching the documentary, I was seeing a lot of his work and I, I've been inspired by him before in some other pieces that I've done. And I thought it would be great to kind of lean into his like neo-expressionism and kind of loud outbursts of creativity, but also his calculated outbursts of creativity. And yeah, I, I just thought it was cool. With this painting, it's very interesting. I actually can't remember how it started. I think it started off as some stripes that were just going all around the page. And I kind of just let myself feel how I wanted everything to move. I love that freedom that you can have in art where you can just do anything. It doesn't have to follow a certain stroke pattern or a way of doing something, or it doesn't have to be as rigid as some other like 
expressions of creativity. With art, you can literally just do anything. And I pushed things around, I altered the colors, I changed the texture, I moved things around, I listened to music, I looked at it from different directions. Underneath it is a bunch of scratchy, like black painting of like different kinds of like, textures and movements and it has its own story one that people can interpret and take for their own and, and draw their own conclusions but for me i see a bird <laughs> isn't that weird how you can have different perspectives and even if you like tilt it and move it in different directions stuff like i'm doing now with my ipad like i see a bird because right now i'm trying to be like a phoenix rising from the ashes you know, coming out of this creative rut or creative slump. And maybe to you, if you tilt your head or look at it face on or look at it upside down, maybe you'll see something else. Maybe you'll interpret it as different things. I don't know. <laughs> but I just really like how paintings and my work makes me feel and how it allows me to express how I'm feeling at the moment and how it can then be later translated and interpreted as something else. Next up, we have an image that has multiple faces and multiple color schemes. And if I was to ever do a gallery type thing, it would have multiple images of the thing, but in the different color schemes that I have. And it's basically this person with really big eyes <laughs> crossing over some water and walking in front of some grass that kind of looks like fire. The sky is all warped and all over the place and zigzagging and like melting into each other. And it basically was to be like, you know the song Wade in the Water? Wade in the water, wade in the water, children wade. It's supposed to be wade in the water, but like kind of a weird take on it where it's a bit more intense, <laughs> where it's like this, this scary looking character is crossing over the water. And maybe it's like me, maybe to interpret it, it could be like, it's me crossing the water, me crossing over something or overcoming something, or maybe it's even more scarier than that of like, like something evil coming towards someone, or I don't know, like, this, I feel like with this painting, it can be interpreted in so many different ways. I haven't really given it an official title, but when I was painting it, I was thinking of wading in the water and like stepping into like the River Jordan or something, but it can be interpreted in so many different ways. And all, all interpretations of my paintings, if you have any in the comments down below, they're all valid and I appreciate them all because it allows me to see different perspectives of my art and yeah. I just, I really like it. I love how in the different colors, like versions of it, there's also different meanings and different perspectives. And I just thought that was a cool way to kind of do art. And then this final piece is one I did literally like two days ago, maybe. It's originally four pictures of some grass that I took in Jamaica in 2017 when I was there last. And it's been completely altered to be almost like a Rorschach test. You know, the, the blobs that, that psychologists use when they're trying to like tell people's minds and stuff, like how they view things. It's basically an interpretation of that, but also not really. And even in that, it is also a Rorschach test. In it being not one, it also is one. <laughs> and I really like it. I like the colors of it. I love the texture of the grass but it also kind of comes into this almost marbling texture. And I just really love it. I love this painting. If I could have it framed, I would. It's so like, like it's such a thing to look at. I could get lost in it for hours, I feel. <laughs> I feel like I could get lost in it for hours. But yeah, this concludes my art tour of my sketches, of my photography, and of my Procreate library or gallery technically is the right word for it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more art videos. Maybe I can do a painting with tea. That would be cool. Where I like do a watercolor or maybe do some acrylics or an oil painting. I'd love to do that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that or any other videos. 
let me know any other videos you want to see in the comments as well and i'll be sure to check the comments to see if any of you guys have left any interpretations or comments regarding my paintings and my art and i'll be sure to answer every single question every single comment every single literally even if you comment an emoji i'll be like ha emoji i'm really happy to share this with you guys because my youtube channel is supposed to be like an expression of me and of my life and i haven't had the opportunity to share my art yet with people so this is like the first time i'm really like sharing my art with people in a more public space than just like my art instagram which you can follow i'll put it down below if you want to follow it but yeah thank you for watching make sure to like comment and subscribe share it let me know whatever you want to let me know in the comments down below <laughs> be kind drink water i love and appreciate you all thank you besties for being here and thank you community and wider youtube audience thank you london i'm not even in london thank you london <laughs> <laughs> Why am I still talking? I can't stop talking. You're still here? Wow, thank you. Anyway, bye. <laughs> what what was that? Honestly, oh, I should mention. Shout out to my mum for getting me this cool shirt from Ghana. Shout out. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's leave. Bye. <laughs>